are talking A Taste of Blood. This one is directed and written by Santiago Fernandez Calvete and is an Argentinian movie originally known as Sangre Verdelac or Verdelac Blood. So this is a vampire movie that was originally released, I believe, in Argentina in 2020, at least in the festival circuit, now getting a wide release in 2022. Now, Verdelac is actually a uh, Slavic version of a vampire, essentially, as far as I know, uh, with some kind of like, some differences really in regards to uh, standard, your standard garden variety vampire. Now, in the context of this film specifically, um, the the vampire, how it works is it kind of, the, the, the closer it is to the victim, as in emotionally close, the better the vampire has the, in, in the experience of drinking blood. So, like for example, if they drink a family member's blood, it gets them, they get more from it ultimately than if they were to drink someone else's blood. So in the, the, uh, this causes the vampires in this movie and in this kind of mythos to seek out those closest to them to drink their blood and ultimately then turn them into a vampire. So that's kind of your basic idea of what a Verdelac is. They have popped up in um, a few kind of media here and there. I believe they were in the V Wars series on Netflix. Anyway, so the, the story focuses on this family who uh, are in this kind of out of the way kind of rustic house and the father seems very overbearing and that's it is a contemporary story so it's in modern times but it almost seems like they live a very kind of simple life and uh, we have this kind of a teenage girl who kind of rebels and she kind of wants to go and see this kind of boyfriend and etc and one day when she kind of sneaks out she uh, is offered a lift home by uh, someone who's claiming to be a relative of her and of course, you can probably guess how that goes. And this leads to uh, this kind of family really trying to kind of figure out who could be a vampire because a member of the family goes out to try and kill this, uh, this original vampire but comes back and we're not quite sure whether they may or may not be a vampire themselves. What will happen, you'll have to watch the movie and find out. So let us discuss. Okay, what do I think works in this movie? I think the movie's biggest strength is in the, in the fact that it knows how to build up a good sense of paranoia. Um, I do have some, some issues with the way that's handled in regards to story elements, but to, to, before we get onto that, you do feel a certain sense of paranoia about, you know, could certain people be a vampire or could they be kind of, you know, not a vampire, but there could be, uh, there could be other things that, you know, lead to certain conclusions. And we can see this kind of this tension building within this family as they're getting kind of more and more stressed about what they're going to do. How, how are they going to kind of, I mean, do they just kind of go with it and, and assume everything's okay? Or do they kind of try and kill someone, but that could be killing an innocent person, things like this. And the, the relationships between members of this family get, are getting frayed as the kind of the movie kind of goes on. And I do think it does a good job of, of kind of really uh, having this ratcheting up of, of levels of kind of paranoia and tension between the kind of the fan members as well. I thought that was really good. Um, I have to say as well, the movie is, uh, is quite quite well directed in regards to kind of artistic style. It's not an art house movie or anything like that, but you do it. I felt this movie does have like a certain kind of artistic charm to it. Like I said, the the movie is a, a modern film. We see people using smartphones and stuff. But it, the, just the aesthetic of it makes it feel like this movie is taking place kind of, um, you know, maybe like 30, 40 years ago, something along the lines of that. Just, just in the way that the kind of the, um, uh, the film is kind of directed and kind of the set design and, and, and kind of costuming and things like that. Uh, I thought that was all good. It's actually based on a 19th century short story, um, I believe it or not. So. Yeah, it's 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 a. I think it's a quite a well directed movie, and on a kind of artistic level, it feels like you know quite kind of uh, meticulously crafted in a, in a kind of a lot of ways. Now, the version that I watched, and I believe this is the version that's coming out in um, uh, you know general release, is is part subtitled, part dubbed, which I thought was a strange choice. But those of you who don't know, like fully subtitled movies, there is that is that option there that you still get some authenticity in regards to. Certain characters um, uh, are sub, but some of them are kind of overdubbed in English. We're going to touch on that again. 
but uh, you know, again, it's like maybe a negative, maybe a positive for some. Um, I gotta say, the actual vampires themselves, I think the, the, the mythology is interesting. I quite like the fact that you have this, you know, sometimes you think, oh, is someone bitten by a vampire? Can they resist kind of their phantom is a little bit like rabies? Can you, can you kind of like have that self-control to kind of like not kill those closest to you? This is the total opposite because these vampires are actually wanting to hunt down the people closest to them. So it gives it this extra kind of dynamic. And the vampires themselves, the makeup is a little bit, is a little bit kind of mixed, I would say, but they've, they've gone from a, like a grotesque look to the vampires. Uh, which certainly makes them not appealing in regards to kind of oh, romanticised ideas about vampires. And these things look quite disgusting, to be brutally honest, with pustules and things all over them. Um, which does give it a, a kind of a more of a horrific feel to it. Uh, but let me tell you, let's but maybe move on to what doesn't work. So as I've mentioned, this movie has part, uh, part dubbed, part subbed. Now, this is the version that I have seen. There may be other versions where this does not apply. I'll say that. But it was an odd choice. I couldn't understand why it was either not fully dubbed or not fully subbed. It seemed like an odd choice to have this kind of halfway, um, you know, halfway kind of like measure in it. It's just a bit of an odd choice to me because the, uh, the scenes that are obviously subtitled, it's the actor's natural voice and it's the overdubbed and the kind of like the dubbing scenes. Weird. I have to say as well, and I suspect this might not be on all versions, but the music choice on this movie not so much the soundtrack kind of the orchestral, that kind of score, that sort of thing, but the songs that are played within this music way do not suit the film or all the kind of the scenes that are in there. And again, I, I, I'm, I'm, it's so kind of misplaced. I almost feel like this was added to this version, this like kind of westernized version of it. Because it just seems really strange. Uh, like we have, for example, we have quite a dramatic scene where, um, a character is kind of facing off against another, another kind of character and it just decides to play this weird kind of like heavy metal music and this what would otherwise be a quite a dramatic scene it doesn't it, it really doesn't fit but there's a, a number of instances where that happens so the music choice is a little kind of like uh weird the i think the main critique for me here however and i can't really critique the acting because it's like i said it's dubbed so it's kind of hard to really see what the performances were like. I don't think the physical acting was fine, but I can't really say too much about the acting. But what I can say is I think this movie's story elements are lacking. When it comes down to it, this movie is about people not doing what they are told time and time and time again, and then ultimately paying the price for it. If people just did what they were told, this, their people in this movie would be fine. But they don't do it, and they don't do it and again and again and again. And, um, one of the crux of this story, and the, the, the main thrust of the story, the main narrative of this, is the paranoia about is that is this particular kind of family member a vampire or not? Now, when this fact when this family member definitely is a human, they go off and say, "When I return, you know, if I come back here when it's not light, shoot me." Um, because I might be a vampire, and you know, if I if I end up becoming a vampire, I will use trickery to kind of to get round you and things like this. Inevitably, this guy comes back, and he's like being ambiguous about what he kind of will and won't do. Certainly, in regards to things like sunlight, and then the fan members are always just are just being sheepish about asking them to right. You, you, you warn us about vampires. Stand there and go in the sun, but they won't do it, and there's no real reason for it. I can't understand that. The, well, the reason for it is the movie needs to go from point A to point B, but in an, in an actual kind of like realistic sense, I mean, it's just like all these people are just kind of being paranoid and thinking, oh, you know, he won't kind of go into sunlight. He that means he might be a vampire. Make him do it. So if you're not coming in here unless you stand out in the sun, and it doesn't make sense. But that's not the only thing. There's just there's just character choices here that don't make any logical sense. Um, I think it's meant to have a little bit of social commentary and about how, you know, humans are the real monsters at the end, but I think that was clumsily handled. Uh, but there's things that happen, this movie, the, the, the character moments just seem to come out of nowhere. Um, people do certain acts, particularly in the, late, the latter stages of the movie, I'm thinking, well, why have you done that? It doesn't really make any sense. Uh, so I found this kind of the, the movie's writing to be quite frustrating 
I think I think it's a lower budget film. Aesthetically, I think for a lower budget film, it, it feels like this kind of rustic gothic charm. And I think it has this kind of this good sense of paranoia, but the story beats don't really kind of add up for me. Um, and it's and it, and it just unfortunately undercuts a lot of this kind of goodwill and, ten, and, and, and kind of tension that this movie's built up at this point. Uh, it isn't particularly gory. Um, the the effects of the vampire they're made to be quite grotesque, but I don't know if it always it, it, it particularly looks all that well applied. So we can see these kind of these vampire makeup. I like the idea of what they were trying to do, but I don't always think it looks like it looks like makeup at times because it kind of like the where it's kind of like faded into the skin and things like this doesn't always look like it's completely finished. Um, and therefore it kind of looks like makeup at times. Again, I like the idea of this kind of more of a grotesque look, but the execution of it was a little bit lacking still, I think. So overall, the movie becomes a little bit tedious because the characters aren't re are, are acting in such a unrealistic manner. Not so much the acting, but just the way they're written. It, 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 I kind of found it a little tedious to watch because you just think, I'm watching people make dumb decision after dumb decision after dumb decision, and there's, there's instances where I think you can get aware of that once or twice, but you know when, when it's just to kind of push a story in a particular direction, I find it frustrating. But it's not a, necessarily a bad film. I do think it's if those of you who like vampire movies and um, it has some good elements in it, may still enjoy it. But it, to me, it's a below average film, just about. So I'm going to give this one a four out of ten. Have you seen it? Would you watch it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.